Continuation of Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 5, page 21, continuing with Chapter 11a. So in a practical way, how do I interpret my own personal prayer language or tongues of angels or tongues of men? First of all, you must believe that your conscience has been cleansed with the blood of Jesus and that you have pure thoughts and holy thoughts. Hebrews 9 verse 14 When you pray in tongues or you hear a person speaking in tongues in a fellowship, ask, Dear Holy Spirit, please give me the interpretation of this tongue. The Holy Spirit will put a word or two words or a sentence into your spirit. Now Paul says, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Romans 12 verse 6 In the beginning, you may have one word or a couple of words or a sentence. Tongues plus interpretation equals prophecy. So be honest and do not stretch yourself beyond your faith and only say the word that was given to you. Sometimes in a fellowship, when people are learning to interpret tongues, the Holy Spirit will give a different word to three people. To the first one he will say money, to the second he will say peace, and to the third person he will say mail. Each person must be honest and faithful to only give the word the Holy Ghost gave them. And the fourth person, who by reason of use has his spiritual senses exercised, will now put those three words together and give the full interpretation of the tongue, saying, Thus says the Lord, Be at peace for the money that was promised to you is coming through the mail. I was talking on the phone with my brother Nell Melanda, and I ministered the baptism of the Holy Ghost to him over the phone, and we interpreted his tongue. I said to him, after he has spoken in tongues for 15 minutes, now we will interpret it so that you will believe that you are speaking sense in the spirit realm, though your understanding does not comprehend a single word. I said to him, the Holy Ghost has put a word in your mind. Tell me what that word is. He said to me, perseverance. And then the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance what Paul says, You have need of patience or endurance, that after you have done the will of God you might receive the promise. Hebrews 10 verse 36 Now God knows the kind of Bible you read. My brother reads his Bible in French, and I read mine in English. So, when the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance Hebrews 10.36, and I read it under my breath, I did not find the word perseverance, but I believe it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Thus I asked my brother, read Hebrews 10.36 in your French Bible out loud, and when he read it, the word perseverance was used instead of patience or endurance. And then I read my version in English, and I said to him, God even knows the version and the translations of the Bible that you read, and he believed the interpretation. Whenever the interpretation of a tongue is from the Lord and is the exact one, you will have peace in your heart. It is the same principle for the interpretation of dreams and visions. The person who had that dream or vision, or the person who spoke that tongue, when the interpretation is given to him, has peace in his heart. Joseph told Pharaoh what would happen when he received the interpretation, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Genesis 41 verse 16 Dreams and visions are prophetic, revelations, and tongues plus the interpretation equal prophecy. Whenever the prophecy is meant for you, God will put peace in your heart. If it is not for you, or it is not the exact interpretation by a private interpretation, there will be no peace from the Lord in your heart. We were also in church, and I said to them, pray in tongues for five minutes, and God will give us the interpretation of that tongue. I said to them, God will give you a word or a picture in your head or a vision, and just tell us that word or that picture or short vision in your head. A sister had a picture of a house on a hill, so I said to her, this is what the Lord is saying. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. 
neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5 verse 14 to 16 the secret about interpretation of tongues, interpretation of dreams and visions is knowing your Bible, knowing the loving heart of God and having the right understanding of the Word of God. Tongues plus interpretation is prophecy. Dreams and visions are prophetic revelation. The interpretation of dreams and visions also follows the same principle. The Holy Spirit gives you a word or words of knowledge puts a picture in your head and brings to your remembrance a scripture. And when you have the full interpretation, God will put his peace in your heart. As you practice it and study your Bible, and these my weekly milk Bible studies, it will become easier for you to interpret dreams, visions, tongues, and many people in the body of Christ will be built up and delivered. You need to believe what Jesus says. It is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Matthew 10 verse 20 And also believe what Paul says. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2 verse 20 And you will need to practice interpretation of your own tongues and of your own dreams and visions according to the written word of God. You will need to practice if you want to flow and grow in the prophetic. Hebrews 5 verse 14 You will have more liberty and boldness as the Lord confirms the words that come out of your mouth and you will come to a point where even when you are speaking to people, you are having pictures in your head and words put into your mind. And as you open your mouth to speak, you will see how accurate the Holy Spirit is in you. The fruit of the Spirit is very important to being accurate in the prophetic. Please pray a lot in your personal tongue. Do not wait to come to church to pray in your personal tongue. And ask the Holy Spirit to give you the interpretation of that tongue. He will give it to you. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one hears, but in spirit he speaks mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 You are building yourself up. You are edifying yourself repairing whatever is destroyed in your soul. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 14 Do not worry if your intellect does not fathom it. You, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, eagerly awaiting the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to everlasting life. Jude 1 verse 20 to 21 Learn to pray in tongues in your mind and under your breath. People ask me, how can you pray in tongues in your mind? I ask you a question, can you think in your mind? If you can think in your mind for hours without opening your mouth or uttering a sound, you can also speak in tongues in your mind without uttering a sound. It will help you to pray in tongues everywhere, in buses, in your office, in a meeting, etc. Do these simple exercises with me. The first one, pray in tongues out loud, and at the same time in your mind count from one sheep to ten sheep. What you will realize is that the fact that you were praying in tongues out loud did not stop you from counting in your mind from one sheep to ten sheep. The second one, speak in English out loud and at the same time count in your head from one sheep to ten sheep. You will realize that you cannot do these two things at the same time. So, when you pray in tongues or speak in tongues, either out loud or in your mind, it is a different part of your brain that is activated. And when you pray, 
or speak with understanding, either out loud or in your mind, it is a different part of your brain that is activated. These results have been proven medically at the ORU University. Since praying in tongues and speaking in tongues activate different parts of your brain than speaking and praying with understanding, thus you can pray or speak in tongues whether out loud or in your mind and at the same time be thinking about other things with your understanding. Most of my praying in tongues is done silently even in my mind. Many Pentecostal believers have never been taught that and they end up being evicted from their accommodation because of the noise they make, for they've been wrongly taught that to pray in tongues effectively, you need to shout at the top of your lungs. Thus they run into trouble with their landlord or with a housing association or with the neighbour who had to call the police because of the loud noise they made while praying late at night. Most of the time when I pray in the Spirit, whether out loud or silently, at the same time I meditate on the scriptures or I ask the Holy Spirit to explain things that I do not understand. The Holy Spirit explains them to me by simply giving me an interpretation of the tongue that I have been speaking. It will be in the form of a picture in my mind or he will bring to my remembrance a scripture that I have read before and explains it to me to answer my question. Most of the time the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance a scripture to interpret that tongue and expound on that scripture. Many times, even when I read a good Christian book or the Bible, at the same time I pray in tongues in my mind. Since they activate different parts of my brain, my praying in tongues in my mind does not disturb my reading. What the church has forgotten is that tongues were for signs to the unsaved people. The purpose of us receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues was to go and witness to the world around us. Jesus told us, You shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Acts 1 verse 8 the disciples of Jesus understood it from the beginning, and they scattered all over the world to spread the gospel to the ends of the world. In the Azusa Street Revival also, in the beginning of the 20th century, they also understood that they received the tongues to be witnesses of Jesus, not just at Azusa Street, but to the ends of the world, and they went all over the world to spread the fire of Pentecost. One may ask, how is it that tongues are for witnessing? Let us see what happened at the day of Pentecost. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Acts 2 verse 1 to 11 on the day of Pentecost, the disciples were oracles of God. They were all Galileans and only spoke Hebrew, yet the Holy Spirit took hold of their tongues and spoke through them. An oracle in this case is a person through whom God speaks and gives answers to the inquiries of the people. The Spirit gave them utterance. The words were not theirs, but the Holy Spirit's. 
Do we have instances of the Spirit of God taking hold of a person's tongue, even against his will to speak God's word, even prophesy? Yes, we have the story of King Saul and his three companies who were hunting down David to kill him. And Saul said to Michal, Why have you deceived me so and sent away my enemy so that he's escaped? And Michal answered Saul, he said to me, Let me go, why should I kill you? And David fled and escaped, and came to Samuel to Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and lived in Naioth. And it was told to Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naioth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God came on the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And they told Saul, and he sent other messengers, and they also prophesied. And Saul sent messengers a third time, and they prophesied also. And he also went to Ramah, and came to a great well in Seshu. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, at Naioth in Ramah. And he went there to Naioth in Ramah. And the Spirit of God was on him also, and going on he went and prophesied, until he came to Naioth in Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel, even he. And he lay down disrobed all that day and all that night. Because of this, they say, Is Saul also among the prophets? 1 Samuel nineteen seventeen to 24 Saul and his three companies did not want to have anything to do with God, for they had come there with the intention of murdering David, yet the Spirit of God fell upon them and gave them utterance, so that they prophesied all that day and all that night. They were oracles of God. God even used a donkey to be his oracle to speak to Balaam. The Bible says, And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of Jehovah stood in the way as an enemy against him, and he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants with him. And the ass saw the angel of Jehovah standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam struck the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of Jehovah stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of Jehovah, she pushed herself into the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he struck her again. And the angel of Jehovah went further, and stood in a narrow place, where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of Jehovah, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the ass with a staff. And Jehovah opened the mouth of the ass, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have beaten me these three times? And Balaam said to the ass, Because you have mocked me. I wish there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. And the ass said to Balaam, Am I not your ass, upon which you have ridden, ever since I was yours to this day? Was I ever known to do so to you? And he said, No. Numbers 22, verse 22 to 30. So God gave utterance to the ass, or donkey, of Balaam. Since God can give utterance to King Saul and his three companies who were working against the will of God and had murder in their heart and give utterance to a donkey, how much more will God give utterance to you and me who are his children and serve us in his vineyard? The prophets of the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi were oracles of God. Most of the time they did not even understand what was coming out of their mouth or what they were writing. God took hold of their tongue and spoke through them. 
God did so to have pure prophecies not tainted with humans' thinking. That is why we can rely on the written word of God from Genesis to Malachi. And everything in the New Testament is to explain what those prophets prophesied and did not know the full meaning of their prophecies. Peter tells us, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter 1 verse 20 to 21 In other words, it is the Spirit that gave them those utterances. They did not operate as oracles of God, but they were oracles of God. That is why we can rely on their written word. Basically, an oracle is a person that is possessed by a spirit. In our case, you become possessed by the Holy Spirit. In the beginning of the 20th century, in the same period of time as the Azusa Street Revival, John G. Lake was having a meeting. During his meeting, the Holy Spirit took possession of the bodies of two believers in the meeting and they started to act a drama on stage. The drama was about how God carried out the salvation plan through Christ Jesus. So everybody in the meeting watched those two believers on stage explaining in their drama the salvation plan of God for a couple of hours. The two believers did not even know what they were doing at all. Still, during the Azusa Street Revival, the Holy Spirit would possess a believer in the congregation who had never learned to play the piano in his or her life, and that believer would go and sit on the piano stool and start playing a heavenly tune that no one had ever heard before. The believer did not even know how his or her fingers were moving by themselves. But when they were no longer possessed by the Holy Spirit, they could not even play a single song on that piano. At times when the brother or that sister who was possessed by the Spirit of God was playing that new tune on the piano, all the congregation would be singing the same song in tongues. So the Holy Ghost also possessed the whole congregation and took hold of their mouths to speak the same song in tongues that they'd never heard before in their lives. When Smith Wigglesworth was holding his meeting, after people had given their lives to Christ, he would minister the baptism of the Holy Ghost to them by praying a simple prayer over the congregation and asking them to now speak in tongues. They would pray in tongues, and he would say to them, Now we will all sing in the Spirit. When he went to the USA, one of the preachers in the congregation said to the preacher seated next to him, This might work with the British, but not here in the USA. But after Wigglesworth had prayed over the congregation, he asked them to now lift up their voices and sing in the Spirit. They all sang in the Spirit, and that preacher who said this will only work with the British was the one singing with the loudest voice. They all sang the same song in tongues. There is a difference between having the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost having the individual. In other words, the individual has completely surrendered and yielded to the Holy Ghost. That was what the saints of old did. You and I need to completely surrender and yield to the Holy Ghost too. Today in Mexico, there is a ministry that works with American Indians. After God had asked them to fast for nine months, they fasted three days from midnight to 6 p.m. and ate two days. They repeated the same thing for nine consecutive months. What happened after those nine months of fasting? In the first service, the people were slain in the Spirit. Many people were possessed by the Holy Ghost and started to prophesy, not knowing what they were saying at all. Some people will call it pure prophecy, because the person saying it has no control over it, but the Spirit of God is prophesying through them directly, as God says it. Two women at work were possessed by the Holy Spirit, and went about laying hands on sick people, and those sick people were instantly healed. They did not even know what they were doing, but their bodies were moving toward the sick people, their hands were stretched out, and their mouths were speaking personal details about the people they touched. Even when you read the book, 
winds of God that explained how the Pentecostal fire of Azusa spread across the USA. One thing you will notice is that the believers were fasting and praying often. So being an oracle of God is literally being possessed by the Holy Ghost. It is written of Gideon, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Horbashi, came upon, possessed, took possession of, took control of, clothed, wrapped, arrayed, and apparelled, Gideon. And he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him, Judges 6.34, NRV, ESV, and ISV. Gideon was not the only man of God possessed by the Holy Ghost, or whom the Holy Ghost took possession of his body in the Bible. Ezekiel was also an oracle of God. The prophecies he delivered to people were not pleasant, and God shut his mouth so that he could not speak in case he wanted to change the word of God or to recant, because of the persecution and the ill treatment of the people toward him. But when God spoke to him, he opened his mouth, and he spoke as an oracle, and once he was done prophesying, he was dumb again. The Bible tells us, I arose and went out into the plain, and behold, the glory of Jehovah stood there, like the glory which I saw by the river Cheba. And I fell on my face, and the Spirit entered into me, and set me on my feet, and spoke with me, and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside your house. But you, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands on you, and shall bind you with them, and you shall not go out among them. And I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth, so that you shall be dumb, and shall not be one who warns them. For they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord Jehovah, He who hears... Let him hear, and he who stops his ears, let him stop, for they are a rebellious house. Ezekiel 3, verse 23 to 27. It is written, And some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to the stronghold to David, and David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, If you have come to me in peace to help me, my heart shall be knit to you. But... If you come to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, let the God of our Father look on it and rebuke it. 1 Chronicles 12, 16-17 Then the Spirit came upon, Horboshi, came upon, possessed, took possession of, took control of, clothed, wrapped, arrayed, apparelled, Amasai who was chief of the captains, and he said, We are yours, David, and on your side, you son of Jesse, peace, peace be unto you, and peace be to your helpers, for your God helps you. Then David received them and made them captains of the band. 1 Chronicles 12 verse 18 David was afraid for his life, so the answer that came out of the mouth of Amasai was not his, but the Holy Ghost took possession of Amasai's tongue to say those words of edification or prophecy to David. It is also written, The Spirit of God came upon Horbashi, came upon, possessed, took possession of, took control of, clothed, wrapped, arrayed, apparelled, Zechariah the son of Jehoiada the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus says God, Why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord, that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has also forsaken you. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. 2 Chronicles 24 verse 20 to 21 Jesus promised us the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued, endue, be endued, be clothed, be arrayed with power from on high. Luke 24 verse 48 to 49. 
Many times we wonder how come those prophets in the Old Testament and the disciples in the book of Acts had such boldness to declare the word of God even when it was at the peril of their life. They gave corrective messages to kings, nations and religious leaders and at times they were killed or persecuted for that. The truth is, those prophets and disciples were possessed or under a strong influence of the Holy Ghost. That is why, when you have received the true baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues, there will be a boldness to speak the word of God in you. Even the believers in Azusa Street Revival were characterized by their boldness and endurance to hardship. They were persecuted for their beliefs about the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues and on healing. They were stoned in some cities in the USA, kicked out of churches because they now spoke in tongues and believed in healing. Yet they kept on preaching the gospel in the streets from door to door, healing the sick, winning souls to Christ and ministering the water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. God intended for us to have the same experience the believers of old had when the Spirit came upon them or were under the influence of the Spirit of God. But better than the believers of old, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, He abides. A New Testament believer who has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues is permanently under the influence of the Holy Ghost. At times that influence can be so strong that one can literally be possessed or controlled by the Spirit of God. At times it is not so strong, but if we learn to yield to the Holy Ghost, people outside will never be able to tell the difference between when we are possessed by the Spirit of God, which means to be an oracle of God, or when we are yielding to the Spirit of God, which means acting as an oracle of God. Remember, Jesus spoke to his disciples in Hebrew, though the gospel was written in Greek. So what Jesus truly meant is that when they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they will be influenced and at times even be possessed by the Holy Spirit, be literal oracles of God. And that is what happened to them on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. God prophesying through those disciples like he prophesied through the donkey of Balaam, through King Saul and his three companies, and through Ezekiel. But God did something new. They did not prophesy on the day of Pentecost in their native language, but in the native language of other people, as we read in Acts 2. Thus the prophecy of God through Isaiah was fulfilled, saying, For with stammering lips, to speak unintelligibly, as though your understanding was unfruitful, and another tongue, he will speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest, cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they were not willing to hear, Isaiah 28 verse 11 to 12. So Isaiah prophesied the speaking in tongues when we received Christ Jesus, who is our rest, according to Hebrews 4. The prophecy of Isaiah included the tongues of angels, the personal prayer language in the diverse tongues of men, and Paul will reuse that prophecy of Isaiah to explain the different types of tongues we have as manifestations of the Spirit of God. In the law it is written, by other tongues and other lips I will speak to this people, and even so they will not hear me, says the Lord. So that tongues are not a sign to those who believe, but to those who do not believe. But prophesying is not to those who do not believe, but to those who believe. 1 Corinthians fourteen twenty one to 22 Tongues of angels plus the interpretation equal prophecy. Personal prayer language plus its interpretation equal prophecy too. Paul reinsists that tongues are assigned to those who are unsaved, especially the diverse tongues of men and their interpretation. It'll make our witnessing effortless and effective. The church has forgotten that tongues are assigned for unbelievers, so they have focused only on a personal prayer language. It tells us what also is in our heart. 
When we are self-centered, we only think about what can benefit us, not what can benefit others. But the heart of Christianity is to die to self and seek the interest of others too. When you are praying in tongues, whether in your personal prayer language or in tongues of angels, pray, Dear Holy Spirit, give me the interpretation of this tongue. For when you have the interpretation of that tongue, it will not only edify you, but also the body of Christ, which is his church. To be continued.